Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You are watching the second season opener of Conversations and Collaborations. I'm starting this new season with uh, Steve Zmack, photographer. We've just recently collaborated on a project which we're going to talk about today. And I, uh, so welcome. Thank you. So what, what we did is we did a, uh, uh, an aerial shot with, with a drone for, uh, I'm doing a project called Little Bells, and that's, uh, uh, I needed a, an establishing shot. And so we met on uh, your town. We did talked about uh, your work, and we got into the aerial stuff. And my little brain started ticking. I go, God, I, let's, let's talk to Steve. <laughs> and then, so then we, I called you a week later, and I told you an idea. And you say, OK, cool. And we showed up at, a, at the designated time, and a, a bunch of us swarmed out of our vehicles did the thing, put the thing in the air, and um, we, we and we did the shot, and it went. Uh, it was exactly what I needed, and it went uh, swimmingly smooth. Completely. So before we start talking about it, I I, I want to give some some thank yous before uh, we get. So everybody that was there. So Steve Zmack, of course, uh, Fernando Bautista, uh, Jose Ortiz, and the Hijos del Sol which is, uh, with him were uh, uh, Joshua David Rubio, Mario Martinez, Victor Hernandez, and Ricardo Alvera, who did all the heavy lifting. So I especially want to thank those guys. Uh, Tom Gundelfinger O'Neill came out uh, and brought uh, Nicholas uh, Mandarago, his, uh, his young assistant, who's a photographer in his own right. And they took shots in the ground. Uh, Joe Asling, who works on uh, Little Bell's project with me, was shooting uh, film as well. Uh, King Grossman, uh, poet and novelist, who will later be on, um, on this show. And uh, the maestro uh, Louis Lebhertz uh, showed up. So we had a kind of a meeting of, of, of artists. Uh, we did our thing. I think everybody had a good time. Well, the, the showing up to do our thing was, was spreading 100 huge canvases out in the park in Carmel Valley. Yeah. You know, that's an impressive thing right there. <laughs> and, and then, so the original idea for this is there's a, an old airstrip on Ford Road. And I thought, oh, that's a cool spot. And I said, I, I, see, I said, let's go to the old airstrip on Ford Road. There's nobody there. That's a great spot. And uh, I, I didn't even go check it out. I just, in my mind, I knew this was perfect. And then I did go check it out. <laughs> and it was perfect, except the weeds were five feet tall. <laughs> so we had to go to Plan B, and we went to the, the park, and uh, we had... Uh, you know, it, it went very uh, it went very easily, and we got the shot, and uh, it, it was very helpful to me. And part of what I wanted to talk about today is our community that 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 uh, that artists will show up for each other on a, a Thursday morning at eleven o'clock. Uh, I'm profoundly grateful for that, and just profoundly happy to live in a place where that can happen. And uh, I, I just thought that was ultimately cool. And I, I, I couldn't have done this otherwise. And so this, this whole, you know, what this community does, we were talking earlier about uh, the photographic community, what you do, um, your show, uh, West Coast, uh, Focus. West Coast Focus, excuse me. So West Coast Focus, again, particularly on photographers here. By gathering to them together, by showing their work, uh, by using our um, community media station, uh, AMP, getting, the, getting it out, getting it online, uh, then the, 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 the groups that we have here, we have the, the um, uh, I, I, I do know the image makers. What, what, tell me some of the other groups. Uh, there's independent photographers and Pottery Trails Camera Club and uh, Salon Jane and uh, Red Light Girls um, and the Facebook group um, Monterey Photography, MoFo. 
So it's like 18, 1,800 members now, I think. Yeah. So we, we've, we've, got this, we've got this great community where uh, we're talking to each other, this, sharing our work, sharing you know, criticism, able to look and really uh, put, put our best foot forward. And that's tremendous. Uh, you, you, know, that's, you know, that's that's just a tremendous thing to me. Uh, so again, thank you. The uh, focus of um, uh, of this show uh, is kind of artist to artist. We 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 do uh, the your town. I, I do three things. So so your your town is a community show. It's about the wider community, uh, and then I do my personal work, which is you know, about, you know, whoever's upstairs running around in my head, um, those many voices. And then there's the, uh, this show, which is artist to artist, and kind of articulating what we do, uh, which we often don't have a chance to do. Uh, now, one of the things that I've been telling myself, again, you know, and, and telling others, you know, younger than myself, is the importance of manifesting. Uh, to think it, to do it, you know, think it, make it happen, and, and go from an idea to reality. And the earlier you can do that, and the less resistance that you can do that, uh, the better. And you've, you know, you're a professional. You've learned to manifest. So let's let's mm -hmm. talk about your own coming together with that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the the TV show is a perfect example of um, you know, I was interviewed very briefly. I was one of, you know, 15 artists uh, interviewed one afternoon on JW Winslow's show, so just a 5-minute interview, but she liked that interview, so invited me back to be on her show for the full hour. And she liked how that went, along with the station manager, Paul Congo, and they joked about, you know, you ought to have a show of your own. And I said, I will have a proposal to you Monday. <laughs> and, I, and I did. And, you know, met with Paul, the executive director of AMP, and went over my show ideas. He liked them and said, all right, you know, give me the next level of development. And two weeks later, I met with him again and had that for him. And we were scheduling the first show, and he introduced me to Michael to be my director. And... We were off and running. I was you know, recruiting guests and getting a sponsor for the show to cover the, the costs. Of well, let, let's talk. So again, <clears throat> then you went to the Arts Council now this so year. I, okay. Originally, I was getting a different photography organization, a nonprofit or a business, um, to sponsor individual episodes that, uh, for instance, um, well, Center for Photographic Art. Um, they sponsored the, f the first episode on uh, photographer Dick Garrett. And, uh, and then each episode, I had to go find another sponsor. And oftentimes, I would, what I was offering them is sort of a commercial spot in there, you know, at, at the mid-half break. But not many had an existing video that they could just hand me to play. So I'd end up having to, like, produce an extra spot that I wasn't scheduled to do. And I got to find a better sponsor situation. So I applied for an Arts Council grant and was awarded that. So to cover my all my production costs for 2018. And the Arts Council of Monterey... Uh is another great institution that's really making this community conversation possible. Well, yeah, because they, you know, when, when artists have a vision, um, they offer many different resources to help that artist realize that vision. Yeah. And, and they're accessible. I, I think that's the main Oh, thing definitely. Here. Very much. So they're yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I, again, with your show, I mean, it's, it seems like you're doing a great service, which you are, but also having all these photographers in, looking at their work, mm -hmm. work uh, just the, the being forced to have these conversations uh, by the need to put on the show, I bet you're learning a lot just looking at everybody's work. So let, let, let's talk about what you're getting out of it. Oh, and I, I didn't expect to, um, you know, to st when I planned the show, I didn't expect that benefit to happen. But um, I ask a lot of the guests. They have to sub submit 35 photos, you know, according to, like, specific specs to work with the video. And... Um, submit a bio, submit uh, photos of themselves as photographers to show during their introduction. Um, I send them questions in advance so they can prepare. So I do ask a, a, a lot of the guests um, from there. And when they submit their images to me, it is just 
mind blown. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, these are, a lot of these are, are photographers I've known for years. They're photographers I go out shooting with on a regular basis, but wow, I've never seen these photos before, or I've never seen this body of work from your early years before, or that you did this work in this genre. I never knew you did that before. And then often reading their bios, which are more comprehensive than maybe what they have posted on, on their website, and I learn so much about them. So it, it is a real treat. And then to get to sit down and ask them all these questions, you know, in a very personal interview, in a very comfortable, like I call the studio, a living room-like environment. And the, the, the magic of the camera, the magic of the camera, when you turn on the camera, people will tell you stuff <laughs> well, that, I, that, 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 they would, that you could know them for 20 years and you would, you would never know. And, and then, but the next level, I find when we go into the breaks and we show the slideshows yeah. to, to music uh, of all, uh, the guest ph photography, when we go into there, and then the conversations that happen off camera, and it's like, wait, 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 stop! Don't say another word. <laughs> yeah. Save it two more minutes, so you can tell that story. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so, how did you, you know, again with this, uh, uh, the idea of manifesting? We'll, we'll talk about this more when we're going to come back to a break. But you've you've had to learn to to go out and make this happen and make stuff happen. Well, it's just, you know, you, you have an idea and you want, you want to realize it. So you just, you know, it starts out like you know nothing. So you just go think of like, well, maybe this person knows something, yeah. you know, and they can give me information and they can point me in the direction of somebody else who knows more. And it just, you just, it's this, uh, you know, you form this network, this sort of spider web of information, but you don't know where you're going. Well, I see you doing stuff like... I'm, you know, I call your phone and I'm off to Alaska to shoot. You know, I mean, these are these are big ideas and big. Uh, you know, you've you've learned to do. To well, a do lot it of a it. Bigger level. A lot of it is not turning down any opportunity. Uh -huh. Any opportunity that comes along, grab it and see where it goes. Don't be pessimistic or skeptical about. Well, that's too small. I don't want to waste my time. That's not going to provide enough exposure or enough income. You know. A common thing that a lot of um, you know Hollywood stars say is there are no small roles, because you never know. You know, having your photos on that coffee shop wall, who what who's going to walk into that coffee shop, see them, and you know, make a sale or introduce you to friends and make a lot more sales or introduce you to a friend that's going to have you in their gallery, or you know, support you in some other way. So you got to grab every opportunity that comes by. I'm gonna. Take a short break here, and we'll be back with part two. You're, you're watching Conversations and Collaborations. I'm Mark Bear. I'm with Steve Zmack, and we'll be right back. You are watching Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com. Hello, I'm Mark Bear. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. I'm with Steve Zmack, uh, and uh, we were t talking about a piece of work we just recently did together that you'll see the video underneath us talking. This is all great. And uh, let's, so let's talk about how you got into the drone idea. Right, right. So um, I got hooked up. The city of Marina, where I live, uh, referred me to an engineering firm that's behind most of the construction going on in, on the former Fort Ord right now because they were looking for a photographer, a local photographer. So I got hooked up with this group, CSG Engineering, located up in the Bay Area, and they have construction projects all over the state. And uh, they wanted drone shots. Now, I, I've been doing aerial photography for 20 years and, and, and this type of work. And it, drones, uh, you know, it's, it's a real kind of a, a limited perspective in the whole aerial photography realm. And so I'm trying to like, oh, you don't want drone, you want aerial work from a helicopter. And but you know, drones, what's fashionable now, and it's so they really want drones. So I say, okay, if this is what the difference between me getting the contract with you guys to be your ongoing photographer, if I have to go drone, then I'll go drone. And so uh, I had a friend who uh, bought one and wanted me to shoot, do some footage for a music video that he and his band were doing. So that's how I learned practicing on his drone. And uh, I really liked it. So a few months later, that's I bought my own same model. Um, Fernando Batista um, got into drones about the same time and he teaches at the Pacific Grove Adult School um, several photography courses and he let me know that they were offering um, a, a course there for 
were free um, for passing the commercial drone licensing test with the FAA. And so we signed up and took that course together and studied for it together. And we even got some outside tutoring um, from a local pilot and uh, passed the tests, uh, got our commercial license and let our client base know that we now have this and let those guys know that now I can start doing drone work. And they already had a shot list waiting for me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to do in the in the commercial realm, let's talk about this this new gallery and let's talk about the wine thing. So let's talk, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, yeah. So uh, photographer, local photographer Manny Espinosa, he's been doing work for commercial work for um, clients in Carmel for several years now, and he uh, again grabbing an opportunity. Um, a friend of his who uh, owns the whole building in Carmel had a space uh, open up, and he jumped on it and uh, opened up the Manny Espinosa. Spinoza Gallery and is going to specialize in wine and vineyard photography because all the other photography galleries in Carmel are more uh, coastal driven, you know, the art of Big Sur and the Monterey Bay. Right, right. But with 17 wine tasting rooms in downtown Carmel, they're the ones telling him that there is an audience to buy wine and vineyard fine art photography. And so he jumped on that and uh, invited a couple other photographers. Um, I think Fernando, I think, is also showing pieces in that gallery um, and uh, yeah just opened two weeks ago so so let's segue uh, the difference between uh, commercial photography and fine art photography and how you'll deal with it in this situation yeah so I go out um, yeah I, I'm a big wine lover you know I, I belong to several local wine clubs I love going out and tasting wine with my wife and that's just a fun activity that we travel all over the state tasting wine and you know, I take my camera everywhere that I go and I'm a big fan of our hometown Santa Lucia Highlands yes, you know that's just you know we, we live so close to such quality you know vineyards and producers um, so uh, I wanted to build up a body of work a fine art portfolio of uh, vineyard photography and I needed access to the property so I approached Pisano winery one of my favorites and also a, um, a very reputable name in our local wine community and I told them this idea for a project a year in the vineyard I want to come out and shoot your vineyard every month for one year and capture the entire life cycle. I want to do an exhibit in your tasting room. I want to publish a book in a couple different formats and sell that in your tasting room. Um, and I also then want to offer photography workshops on vineyard photography in your vineyards and offer like a, a picnic lunch with a wine tasting and, I, and make it a lot of fun. And so we, they loved all those ideas and we moved forward and did all of that. And so now I've got this huge huge body of work of fine artwork but and and people are seeing it other wine lovers other people in the wine industry are seeing it and for instance like River Road Wine Trail Association or the Santa Lucia Highlands Wine Artisans Association they see the photos they want to start using the photos on their websites and in their brochures and their event announcements so I start licensing the photos to them and that's where we cross the line from fine art into commercial so now they're licensing my photos but now for instance now they have a specific event or they are opening up a new vineyard they plan a new vineyard property, open up a new production facility, they need a photographer, I'm at the top of their mind, so now they have me out to just do a purely commercial shoot for them. You, you've used your fine art passion to hone your skill, because uh, again, every, every, every kind of photography has its own difficulties. For instance, shooting food is very, very difficult. <laughs> uh, you, you know, and uh, shooting vineyards to make it look interesting because after a while it Right. It, it looks like a bunch of grapes in a vine. You know, it 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 it, it becomes uh, it becomes so iconic and such a postcard. So how do how do you how how do you how do you uh, well, work through not having just the postcard? You know, every region in California, every wine growing region has its own characteristics visually. You know, its own visual personality of the the surrounding landscape. So you really got you know you play a lot off of that, and approaching how to photograph it differently. So when I I um, wanted to get into this type of photography. I looked at the other photographers in this area, um, as well as like up in Napa and Sonoma, and how they were approaching photographing grapes, or a bottle of wine on a on a wine barrel, or an entire vineyard. And I wanted to like, okay, I see how they're all doing it. I want to do it different. What's the Steve's Max touch? Right. Yes. So so I so you know you line all of us up, and you can you know pick my style out of the group. 
So and and then you and again you're learning from from them and oh, so yeah. so so what you get out of art uh, now when you go into you know just being a wine lover having the opportunity to go to these vineyards because you happen to be a photographer and have a camera how much more are you seeing now when you go in oh a lot and so I learned so much about the wine making yeah. operation yeah. and growing the grapes and the care and both the intense science and artistry that come together and that's why wine and vineyard is so interesting to me because it's like I, I don't I don't see anything else comparable that brings art and science together and marries them um, in just such a perfect and interesting interesting way. And you've got to, your job, the, the, the alchemical trick mm -hmm. is to, when you photograph the wine or photograph the vineyard, you've got to make them taste the wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're, 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 you're selling it. Your, your picture has to, has to be the taste of the right. wine. And, well, and a lot and, of it and, is and the, in, uh, in many ways, it has to be truly that. And, and you're also, you're not just selling the wine, but you're selling the lifestyle. lifestyle. And you're selling the craftsmanship of the artist that made the wine or grew the grapes. And you're so, you know, in, in wine, I use the term terroir. You know, the, everything that goes into the wine, it's, it's the land. It's the it's the climate and it's the weather. It's the it's the workers. Um, it's what happened that let's, year. Let's was there say a fire that, say that word again. Terroir. Terroir. Yeah, and that's 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 like the whole holistic, everything that makes up. So a, is, a, a is, 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 is a that the wine. is that the same word that when they talk about a certain taste of the of the earth? That, yes, that, 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 exactly. Uh, is, that's unique to that. That's vineyard. unique. Yes, right. And yeah, it's, I, I, I've it's, heard that word before. I love that. It's from the soil to the rain to every hand that touches the grapes. You know, it, it's it's everything in there, and that's the story that you're telling. You're telling that whole package. You're not just telling. You're not just showing a bottle of wine, a glass of wine, or a bunch of grapes. You're telling the story of the entire life of that grape to the finished product. So when you ha had the uh, idea, which probably just popped into your head very quickly, mm -hmm. I mean, is this how this no, idea? No, no. It's how, sort how, of how, how, did, how did this starts idea? Starts and it festers, and I bounce ideas off my wife, and I bounce ideas off other photographers or wine lovers. And then you, but that, and, and then once you had it clear, then you you acted. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is so you start pushing forward, yes. and then new ideas start coming up yes. that uh, like we're go okay we're going to branch off in this way and that way, and so it's an it's a it's an exploratory journey as well. It's not entirely mapped out, and a lot of it is you just got to throw yourself into the unknown, and and trust yourself that you're you're going to come through it, and you're going to. You have a community that's going to support your efforts, and and I have had projects where the community hasn't come out in support, and I just know, well, that's a dead end project, and let it die. Yeah. And sometimes things don't work out. Yeah, and let's but, follow, but, but follow some other you path. Know, but you, you had to try. You have to try, and you always learn something from the journey. It's yes. never a, a complete waste. You know, you might not get the end product, but you did take something away from it that's going to make your next uh, journey better. So for me, like the idea of manifesting, I have an idea about we're going to do the drone shot, and we show up in. Carmel Valley. Well, that's all grand. You have an idea, and you show up in Alaska. So let's let's let, 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 let's talk about your manifesting. And, let's and, talk about Alaska. And that was another, you know, an opportunity that got dropped in my lap. I always wanted to go up and photograph uh, Alaska, the wildlife, the landscape up there. And uh, I have a friend, a local here, Cynthia DeVincent, a great um, photographer and uh, marine biologist. She does documentary cruises up uh, the Alaska coast to study whales and other marine life. And I'm trying to find a way of like, you know, let me get on your boat How as do a, I cook, get it? Yeah. I'll be a cook and a dishwasher, you know, to be a part of your cruise so I can go on this and, 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 and get there and shoot it. So that's what I'm willing to do. Well, I'm telling this to a, a friend, a couple of mine that own an ad agency in Aptos and represent um, one of the lodges in Denali National Park. And they need a whole collection. They want a whole collection of their own photography. So they don't have to rely on stock anymore. They can use their own original work. So they need a huge body of work. So they wanted to bring me up there for, um, so the guy at the ad agency put me together with the general manager of the lodge and the tour company. And uh, they flew me up there for two weeks and to just do nothing but photography. Pretty grand. Yeah. yeah. But, but the idea started in your head. And I wanted to get to Alaska. You wanted to get yeah. there. And then by dint of, dint of pushing forward yeah. 
And that's sort of, that is the secret of manifestation. Yeah, and not keeping it a secret. I was letting people know, this is what I'm trying to do. And, and one person said, hey, I think I can get you there. The other piece of it is um, not being, is telling, the, again, when you start telling the story, it's the public commitment. Once you commit to, oh yeah, yeah. Once, once you start telling your friends, right. I'm going to do something. Right. It, it's and and that's an important thing to do. Uh, it's it's really part of the manifestation. They live a little vicariously through your adventure. They all want to go to Alaska, but, but they but, can't get there. So they're going to get there through you and see right. your photographs. But, 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 when but you come also back. by you, by the the action of saying, "I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to do this," and mm -hmm. repeating, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this." You're committing to it. You're, once you've told people you're going to do it, you're kind of yeah. You, otherwise, you, you, you're, you, the, you, you're 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 out the door. The, the artist who cried project. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a, that's a great shot. <laughs> So, any, any, any last words before we uh, clean up on this or we're done with this? Uh, no, it was just really uh, exciting to work with you on your project because you offered something visual that I've never seen before in all the drone forums where people post their photography. I've never seen artwork laid out in that big of a space before in a park and photographed from the air. So, it was a great visual interest to me to be able to participate in that. And it was simple. You know, it could have been very difficult, but but it was you know you know there's simplicity to it, and it really uh, I've been thinking you know again I was thinking well I'll do it on the beach and I'm thinking well there's sand there's we did have some wind issues but yeah, well, you know we, but the, we, like, we, 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 some some dogs entered the scene yeah. uncued you know yeah. <laughs> and they didn't ask for money they were fine they were they were they, were, they didn't demand it right. so so anyway a pleasure thank you so much this is great work and. Uh, what a luxury we get to talk to each other like this. Yeah, right. So anyway, I'm Mark Baer. I'm with Steve Zmack. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. And see you back soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.